Hi, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, based upon where you are. Welcome to my personal profile. Let me just take a minute and share this to my group. Okay, done. Hi, everyone. It's been a minute. I am Risha Ferdinand. I am a boutique business strategist, and I work with product-based businesses to help them turn their hustles into sustainable retail businesses. So today, it's a hot topic because it's a lot of miscommunication around being on social media all day, every day. So if you are in the business of selling a physical product, you will want to watch this live today. Okay, so grab your notepad and your pen and let's jump right in. So many times we hear people tell boutiques that you need to be on social media often. You need to be sharing every day, every single day. Post as much as you can because of the algorithm and all of these different things. Now, the truth is, there is some facts in that, but it's not 100% facts. So let me explain. If you create your content for the next 30, 60, 90 days, or even 120 days in advance, and you actually schedule this content, the truth is you, the individual, don't have to be on social media 24-7. The fact that you are scheduling your content days in advance, months in advance, weeks in advance, it will automatically show up on social media, right? without you being present. But that's one thing. Another thing is social media is not your only marketplace. Let me repeat that. Social media is not your only marketplace. There are other marketplaces that you have not tapped into because you have been so focused on social media alone that you are missing the opportunity to capture sales in other parts of the market now what do i mean well the truth is let's say you're in the business of selling lipsticks different types of lipsticks the women who want your lipstick are they all 100 percent on social media the truth is no they aren't all on social media there are some women who prefer no online presence they prefer to shop in the mall they prefer that things mailed to them there are different things that they prefer to do. However, if you zone in only on those ladies, let's say it's women that you're selling lipsticks to, if you are only focusing on selling to those women who are only on social media, then you are missing out the rest of the whole, the rest of the marketplace. So my recommendation to you is do not only place emphasis on capturing sales or customers through social media there are other strategic places that you can look to find your customers but they are all not 100% on social media if you are quite happy with getting two sales a day or two sales a week or two sales a month by you spending 100% of your time on social media then unfortunately that type of business practice will not allow you to grow your business into a sustainable business. Your business will not continue in a foreseeable future. Your boutique will literally shut down and it will shut down when you shut down. So therefore you want to ensure that you are doing strategic things inside of your business in order to get the growth that you are looking for. So stick with me. Where are the places that you can look? Now, I know some of you do pop-ups. You have pop-up shops, okay? But that still requires you physically being there. What are other things that you can do without you having to be there in person to sell? So we know about email marketing. Okay, fine. We also know about ads. We also know about search engine optimized websites, whereby your websites have a lot of keywords in it so you can get organic reach if someone randomly is searching a product on Google. You also want to be able to capitalize on these different mailers. For example, 
we have USPS as well as Vistaprint. They both offer a service whereby they allow you to bring in your product, whatever it is, if it's a coupon, whatever have you, and they will mail it out to a particular state or a particular zip code. You are very much familiar with receiving a lot of coupons in your mail or magazines in your mail. And in those magazines are lots of coupons for different products in your home. So when you're going to the grocery or you're going to the mall, you would cut out those coupons and you would go and purchase. So why not you as a business owner work on getting your um, coupon or your gift voucher inserted in these magazines, in these newspaper, using news newspapers or whatever it is. So that way people can easily find you as opposed to you finding them. Take a moment and look around your home. When you look around your home, you would find furniture, you would find grocery items, you will find appliances, and each one of them have a brand associated with it. Whether it's a, an expensive brand, a luxurious brand, or whether it's a no-name brand. But at the end of the day, they're each product in your home, each physical product, whether how small it is or large it is, it's in your home. There are some things in your cupboard, your kitchen cabinets, that you consistently purchase every month without even thinking about it. Why do you do these things? Why did you purchase that furniture set from Ashley Furniture Store? Why did you purchase that jacket from Calvin Klein? Why did you purchase these things? Like last night I read someone on my newsfeed she said that um, she's upset with herself because she went on Fashion Nova website and she made some purchases and that was never her intent. With all that young lady realizing, she made an impromptu purchase. She did not plan for that purchase. She went on Fashion Nova's website and immediately, within seconds, she was grafted in and she shopped out. So she was able to walk away with a number of items and then after the fact, she was like, what did I do? It's the same effect that you want to create for your customers. It's the same thing you want to create for those who are visiting your website. It's the same thing that you want to create when someone reads an article and they see your coupon code inserted in the newspaper or the magazine. It's the same effect that you want to create. But all of this that I just spoke about has nothing to do with you being on social media 24-7. You do not have to be on social media 24 seven every day of the week in order to get one sale. If you look at the return on the investment that you're making there, it's really low because you are spending 24 hours and there are some of you who have been spending 24 hours on social media to get zero sales. That is the worst and unwise business practice you can ever make. So I want you today to take some time and revisit your strategy. Revisit what you are doing. Look at how many times now our phone, our devices now can tell us how many time, how much time we spent on social media on different websites, etc. And it could actually tell you, well, you spent one, one hour um, today on social media, on Facebook and whatever have you, how much time you spent on your device for the day. If you look back at that and you would realize, dang, I spent 12 hours on Facebook today. What did I do over that 12 hour period? What do I have to pro as proof? What does my return on that 12 hours I spent on social media today? Did I get a sale? What strategic did I do today? Was I just engaging in groups and having conversations? No, the truth is if you can spend two or three hours engaging in Facebook groups with the hope to get a sale and you still haven't received the sale, you need to revisit that strategy. I am not saying and I'm not discrediting engaging in Facebook communities. I encourage people to engage in Facebook communities. However, everything must be done in a particular time frame. You must be able to manage your time for your business as opposed to your business managing you. So, where are your clients? Where are your customers? They are all over. 
they are all not 100% on social media. So therefore, you want to spend some more time where your clients are elsewhere and get your product in their faces. The brands that are in people's faces the most are the ones that become a household brand name. Let me repeat that. The brands that are in people's faces the most are the ones that become the household brand name. So my question to you is, what are you doing to raise brand awareness? What are you doing to use marketing psychology on your viewers, on your website visitors, on your social media um, followers? What are you doing to be able to raise brand awareness? What are you doing to raise brand awareness on the communities, the way you live, in the area that you live? In the, let's say, the school that you're at in your workplace, what are you doing to raise brand awareness? There are so many things that you can do that, is, that can be done effectively and efficiently outside and apart from social media. And it's all about being strategic with your time. What, how do we come up with strategy? That's the next question. Well, strategy is all specific to your business model. It is specific to your financial resources. It is also specific to your competency. If you have someone who's also in the clothing industry, who sells the same clothes as you and targets the same market as you, and you are looking at that competitor and asking in those groups, hey, what are you doing to get more website visitors? Or what are you doing to convert your visitors into customers? And they will tell you what they have done. But by the time you look at their strategy, you realize, hey, I cannot do that. I don't have the time to do it. I don't have the resources. I don't have the cash flow. So which means I need to find a strategy that is specific to me, to my business, to my goals. If your aim is to get 100 items sold in a month, then you definitely need to revisit your social media usage time. You cannot expect to get 100 items sold in a month by you using the same social media strategy we were using a month ago, two months ago, or a year ago. Because if it, those strategies have not yet yielded 100 items being sold in a month, then therefore it's not working for you. So therefore you want to get a strategy that is specific to your business as well as to your goals that you want to achieve in your business. So I trust that this live was a bit informative. If you object, let me know in the comments that you object. Let's have a conversation. If you would like to have a strategy that is specific to your business, as well as if you're ready to turn your hustle into a sustainable retail business whereby your business is generating consistent income for you, then hit me a message because I have space for three more persons in my board meeting program and before the year is over. So if you want to join in, send me a message. Let's have a conversation. Let's see if we can work together and if I can help you. Also, if you have not grabbed the plug and play 365, that is a critical product for you product-based businesses. So that way you can plan in advance for the next 365 days. Unfortunately, Many small businesses do not strategically plan and they are not proactive. And because they are not proactive, they are missing out on sales opportunities. If you don't want to miss out on sales opportunities, I admonish you to plan in advance. I admonish you to be strategic in the way that you are running your business. I've created a resource specific for product-based businesses, for you boutique owners, so that it can help you plan in advance. It can help you put things into perspective. It can cause you to become more creative and come up with a step-by-step -step plan on how you're going to achieve your monthly sales targets for the entire year of 2022. And guess what? It's a one-time investment that can be used. The product can be used over and over for 2023 and the years beyond because it's an editable document okay so thank you for watching this quick live 
Thank you for joining in. And as you know, I don't build hustles, I build legacies. So give me a message, hit me up, and let me know if you're ready to turn your hustle into a sustainable retail business. Thank you for watching. Bye.